teach art full time um, and I used to draw comics, I still do when I'm not teaching and not eating. So these are my, my products. I am more known for Kevin. Okay, so this is my title, Kevin. It's a comic strip about a dinosaur who is very motivated by food and beer, just like myself. Uh, currently, there are eight volumes. And I also draw another series called Libera Nos e Malo. It is Latin for Deliver Us from Evil. And this is something uh, that is quite different. It's a gothic action hat, but rather absurd kind of humour. And the story is about this exorcist who is who is a cyborg for some reason. Um, and he set up this company called Hex Spiritual Service. And he goes around to eradicate demons for whoever calls for his help. Okay, for today's workshop, what I will do is I will share with you my processes of how I panel a comic based on the script, both in a traditional manner as well as digitally using an iPad. Okay, so this is my thumbnail or rough process which I produce based on a script. So after the thumbnail, okay, what I will do is I will enlarge the thumbnail to make it look bigger. So this is page one on the left and page two on the right. Okay, the reason why I lay it up like that instead of one page by one page is because comics, when uh, it is a book, you need to open up the book and you consider the composition in terms of a flipped open page instead of a single page. So this is my old um, sort of uh, draft, which I showed my editor and then I got scolded. Okay, because right, right now I'm going to talk to you about a few rules uh, when you do compositions, when you do panel layout. Okay, because the first one is um, you need to ensure readability. That means the reader's eyes, uh, since we are not doing the Japanese convention, we are reading from left to right. So the way your characters look at certain directions or your speech balloons and text should follow in a sequence that leads your viewer's eyes across the page and then go to the next page. So the first issue over here is that this character is looking at the wrong direction. Right, so when you read it, it's not that smooth. So I have to change the entire layout to give it a smoother flow. And this is the first thing that you should take note of when you do composition. And this is the final product. So you can see that there's many, many pages. And imagine drawing this all by hand. And imagine the amount of ink that I have to use. And this is only half of my story. And this story was uh, 40 pages, and here is like 20 pages. Of it. Now I'm going to show you how I use my iPad to draw digitally. The app that I'm using is called Ibis Paint. You can get it for free from either Google Play or uh, Apple Store. Okay, so for Ibis Paint, it looks like this, in case you want to take note of how it looks like. I like to use the biggest size available when it comes to iPad. Because um, if your pages are, for example, A4 size, right, you need to be able to visualize when you zoom out on actual size how it looks like. Even if your books or pages might be smaller than A4, for example, if you want to work on A5, remember earlier I told you that a page is, when you open a book, you have to see the layout of two pages. So having a bigger screen would also allow you to do that. And the other reason why I go with a large iPad size is um, I make use of the split screen function to put my script on one side so that I can refer to the script when I'm drawing. Okay, so let me just show you my script. And this is my script. And I have a breakdown somewhere. Yeah, so panel one, panel two, and I, I will roughly indicate uh, for each page how many panels are there and what goes on in each panel. So the italic part is the speeches, which I can then highlight, copy and paste into the uh, comic pages that I'm doing. So how do you start a new page for those of you who are new to this app? Create a new page. You can choose default such as A4, but if your pages have bleed, that means if your images run all the way to the edges of your book and you want to cut it off, you have to allow at least 3mm on all sides of your A4 pages. So here, I have set it to 216 times 303, which is a 6mm um, more uh, uh, than the regular A4 size. Okay, and then this is like how you create a new page. And then according to your script, you need to decide what scene goes on 
uh, into each panel what is the size of the panel so for example my first you look at the right side of my script the first scene is an establishing scene and that calls for a larger frame and the second one is some sort of interior of the conference hall and there's a lot of people gathered in there and the third one is a close-up okay so Ivy's plane has lots of interesting functions. One of them is frame divider. So you can set how big or how narrow um, your frames are, frame thickness and all that. And all you need to do is to just divide your frames according to however you like it. You can even cut it horizontally or you can select certain pages and you get rid of this so that I can have a full page here. Okay, now I will show you a complete process of how I go about breaking down and paneling a page. IBS Paint has a very interesting function called Automatic Recording and Playback. Uh, now I'm going to show you how I can use it to um, record my process. Okay, let me find the page. So this is the page that is corresponding to the script on the right hand side. Let's take a look of how it's completed. This is the final, um, the, the outcome of the page. Okay, now that it will play back, you can see my process. Um, okay, it's okay to find reference image and trace on top of it because you will, you're going to spend a lot of time if you were to do this from scratch. So the first scene is, a, is this gothic style looking cathedral um, and I just used a similar reference image to figure out the size and the rough perspective. But of course, I cannot just straight away trace without modifying some of the parts. So what I'm doing here is as I trace, I will make little changes to make it look different from the original image so that I will not run into some sort of copyright issues. Okay, so when you are using tracing, also do take note. Uh, it is more ideal if you take your own photograph and trace. But of course, I can't take photograph of, a, of this nature, right? So I have to rely on secondary images. But photograph is always better than another artist's drawing. So you do not trace from someone else's work. Um, of course, unless you classify photography as someone else's uh, works as well. Um, but as long as your final image does not completely look like your reference image, I think it is okay to take some references from photographs. Okay, so um, digital has an advantage of uh, being able to copy and paste. So just duplicating a lot of the similar structures of this cathedral and pasting it all over the place. Take note that I've also lengthened the body of the cathedral and now the design looks quite different. So maybe meanwhile, this thing is running, right? What is going on on the second and the third and the fourth panel? Okay, so according to my script, this first panel is very big because this is known as an establishing shot because you need to introduce the context. Where is this story taking place? Okay, this is taking place in this very grand cathedral. There's a congregation or meeting of sorts of, of exorcists. The second one is when you go inside the cathedral, you see an interior shot of this, this conference hall where there's a lot of people being seated. So again, I will have to find an image of such a a sized gathering which kind of fits my vision of how it should look like and then I would start tracing all over again. Then now I will start to draw the characters according to my story. Artists will choose to do like a character template but I just like to draw it as I go along, it's more organic. Oh, there's Waldo over there. Okay, you can find Waldo or find Wally in, uh, in the middle of the crowd. Sometimes I also do the copy and paste and change a little bit. And, and when I draw crowds, I tend to have funny things happening within the crowd so that it doesn't look uniform from a distance or, or up close. Then after this frame, the next one, uh, originally I wanted it to be one panel. So I have a close-up of this piece of crude drawing of a cartoon body. And then what happens after is that this drawing is held up to a person's head in a way that it matches. Yeah, this very primary school, very juvenile jokes that some of you might have done before if you are old enough. That is the clean-up and the inking. 
So working digitally allows you to do the processes not necessarily in a sequential manner. You can do the last panel before you do the first or whichever you think is simpler to do or doesn't matter. The last two, I don't think I've used any kind of references. By the way, if you just need close-up of your hands or body parts, there is no need to Google for images. You can just use the camera function and use your own hand as the model. Take a photo, import it into the app and trace over it. Then the next step is filling in the blacks. Um, this is so easy when you do it in iPad because you don't have to apply the ink stroke by stroke. You can undo it if you fill in a wrong area and it makes the whole process a lot faster. This is my first page. Later, my app will show you how long it takes for me to complete this draft. I'm just adding in details and then finishing it up putting the dialogue balloons and make sure to arrange it in a way that flows and not covering a lot of the important parts. Sometimes I also like to put the dialogues before I draw the images so that it gives me an idea of how much words is there. If there is a lot of dialogue, then I might not want to draw too many things. Okay, so you can see that it took me 9 hours to finish one page from start to finish. What's your advice for new coming up talents who are going to do comics? Oh, okay. So if you are new and if you want to start working in comics, you want to try drawing some comics, my advice would be to not jump into a super long epic story. Start with a three or even two page uh, comic. You can also find some script writers who has a comic script and all you have to do is to illustrate it so that you don't have to spend a lot of time writing your own stories. Um, and also, I think it's important, to, it's important to beef up your drawing skills, learn how to draw perspective, do live drawings, uh, study about colours, um, so that whenever you are drawing, you can express emotions to the fullest extent. Okay, hello, my name is Cleo. I'm an art educator and I like to eat, I like to drink beer. Hi. Dream beer? Yeah. <laughs>